As the transportation sector shifts to sustainable mobility, it's our company's mission to deliver best-in-class products that support this changing paradigm. Electric compressors are a critical component that impacts charging speed, cabin cooling, and battery cooling in electric vehicles. We're proud to offer one of the first American-made electric compressors and the industry's largest range of capacity, from 2 kilowatts to 30 kilowatts and 24 volts to 850 volts, providing innovative solutions for automotive and heavy-duty applications. Our partners at Navistar are also here with us supporting this effort on the road to zero emissions. Today, we're excited to announce that TCCI is the first company in Illinois to be part of the Reimagining Electric Vehicles in Illinois Tax Credit Program. With our $20 million capital investment, retention of 103 jobs, and creation of more than 50 new jobs. Additionally, Rebuild Illinois has granted $15.3 million to Richland Community College and $6 million to the City of Decatur to help revitalize manufacturing, accelerate electrification, and bring a new model for public-private partnerships. Working side by side, we will develop a three-tiered facility, including a premier electric vehicle component manufacturing facility, a climatic center for innovation and research, and EV Advanced Engineering and Software Technology Training Academy. Together, we will create a one-of-a-kind immersive experience at our headquarters in Decatur, Illinois, and is expected to be operational by the second quarter of 2024. It starts with the premier electric vehicle component manufacturing facility as a cornerstone of our operations, which will bolster Illinois manufacturing and grow the capacity for Made in America electric vehicle component parts production. Secondly, we'll be developing a climate center for innovation and research to support technology advancements and climate testing for high voltage systems, battery cooling, and both AC and heat pump capabilities. Furthermore, and critical of importance, the climate center will include a DC fast charger for electric vehicle testing inside the chamber. The climate center will be available to outside industry and researchers, including our partners at Illinois' Granger College of Engineering and Northern Illinois University, who are also here today with us. <laughs> Lastly, the EV Advanced Engineering and Software Technology Training Academy will be a one-of-a-kind immersive workforce development program with Richland Community College. We'll hear more about this unique workforce partnership from President Valdez. This collaborative effort is a game changer for all of us here today, for the future of American manufacturing. This would not have been possible if not for Governor Pritzker, his administration, and key staff state leaders, including Deputy Governors Andy Menard and Christy George, DCEO Director Sylvia Garcia and Acting Deputy Ali Grady. <laughs> Senator Doris Turner. <laughs> Representative Sue Shear. <laughs> Senator Tammy Duckworth. Greg Bales, Senior Advisor to Senator Dick Durbin. <laughs> Michael Kerrigan, Illinois Commerce Commission. <laughs> City Manager Scott Wrighton and Mayor Julie Moore Wolf. <laughs> President Chris Valdez and Reverend Courtney Carson from Richland Community College.
President of the EDC for Decatur and Macon County, Nicole Bateman. President of the Illinois Manufacturers Association, Mark Denzler. The University of Illinois and Granger College of Engineering. And Northern Illinois University. I would also be remiss if not to recognize our own TCCI team here with us today. Our leadership team includes Kara Demergen Huss, Vice President, uh, Charles Demergen, General Counsel, Dennis Flaherty, Chief Operating Officer, Simon Gore, Chief Financial Officer. Drew Kaiser, Vice President and Global HR Director. And Joe Bietto, our plant manager. We're fortunate, we're fortunate to have some of the most experienced, talented, and innovative minds in the industry working at TCCI and all our employees. Thank you. We could have chosen anywhere to expand electrification around the world, but we chose Decatur. We're extremely fortunate in Illinois to have exceptional leaders in place who understand and are willing to invest in EV and the long-term benefit of building infrastructure, creating jobs, and reducing our long-term dependence on foreign oil. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce the 43rd State of Illinois Governor, J.B. Pritzker. Well, thank you so much, Richard. It is terrific to be here. It's a pleasure to be with all the employees of TCCI uh, and here at your headquarters. I want to recognize the leadership team that Richard just mentioned for making this tremendous moment possible for all of us. And to the entire Demersion family who have built their manufacturing business and global headquarters right here in Illinois since the 1970s, supplying millions of compressors to major OEMs like Navistar and VW and John Deere and CAT and more. Thank you for your commitment to our state and to investing right here in your hometown of Decatur. This is a business that's uh, keeping up with the times and growing by leaps and bounds, and I was proud to have Vice President Kara Demersion Huss join me at the White House to witness President Biden's signing of the $52 billion Chips and Science Act. Today is yet another momentous occasion that we get to share together. To Mayor Julie Moore Wolf, to uh, Senator Doris Turner and Representative Sue Scherer, and to all of the business, education, and industry leaders who've joined us today, including J.D. Miller with the IBEW 146 and Tom Kepler with IUPAT Local 288. Thank you. Thank you for working together to grow these jobs right here in Decatur and making it known to Illinoisans everywhere. If you want to build a career in the electric vehicle economy, you can start right here in Decatur. Less than 10 months ago, I signed Illinois' groundbreaking Reimagining Electric Vehicles Act into law. Today, I am proud to make this announcement that we're welcoming yet another electric vehicle investment to Illinois, and the first of many that that ambitious legislation will produce. TCCI, an industry leader in compressor technology, is bringing an investment of more than $20 million to its hometown. DC TCCI's retooled factory will employ more than 150 residents from Decatur, as you heard uh, from Richard, and also from the surrounding communities. And you know, this is another in-state element to the EV ecosystem of Illinois that we're building. 
which is especially crucial given the supply chain challenges of the past year. And thanks to the REV Act, Illinois beat out international competition to bring this deal home. That means new jobs and jobs that would have gone overseas are staying right here. That brings me, yeah, that's. That brings me to my favorite component of this new project. TCCI isn't just investing in their own success, they're bringing the Decatur community along for the ride. With the support of the state and Richland Community College, they'll be breaking ground on this new climatics, clim climatic center that Richard talked about. It's a center for innovation and research, a facility that will allow new testing opportunities for the EV industry more broadly, and it affords students an incredible nation-leading technology and training opportunity. The new center is yet another example of how, in Illinois, we are matching our workforce training with the needs of our business community so that we can maintain our reputation as a hub of talent uh, and high quality jobs of the future. Just 50 miles north of here, Rivian has partnered with Heartland Community College in Normal, which is home to an ambitious, innovative manufacturing training academy designed to prepare workers for EV and energy storage jobs. With targeted apprenticeship programs in community colleges across the state, 12 world-class research universities, two of the top 10 universities in the nation, 24,000 STEM graduates annually from our universities, and the fact that the University of Illinois produces more engineers than MIT, Caltech, and Stanford combined, there isn't a shadow of a doubt that we are building one of the most highly trained, sophisticated, and dedicated workforces in the nation, and the most talented people for any manufacturer, especially any EV company that's looking for a new home. We're bringing all of Illinois into the 21st century economy with good jobs and business opportunities, and this is yet another way that we're making that our reality. This pivotal moment for our economy our climate, our communities demands ambition, and Illinois is meeting this moment. So I want to thank you again to TCCI, to the Demersion family. Uh, you're going to hear more about the partnership with Richland, which I'm so very excited about, President Valdez. I really am. This is something that we're doing, trying to do all over the state with community colleges, but Richland stepped forward to be a partner here, and they're terrific. And with that, I'd like to welcome to the podium a tireless advocate for economic growth in every corner of our state, and that's our Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity Director, Sylvia Garcia. Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everyone. As was mentioned, my name is Sylvia Garcia, and I'm, I serve as the Director of the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. And I'm so excited to be here in Decatur with so many state and local leaders. Uh, today's announcement is the second indicator in the last few weeks and is another example of Governor Pritzker's commitment to spurring economic development in communities across Illinois and is a part of our bold vision for our great state of Illinois. Under Governor Pritzker's leadership, Illinois has enacted innovative climate change measures that demonstrate a long-term commitment to building a clean energy economy and bolstering Illinois' electric vehicle industry and supply chain. Supply chain's so key. I know we keep hearing that, but the onshoring of the supply chain and seeing that right here in the United States, right here in Illinois, is so critical and truly builds on our long manufacturing history in this great state. The Reimagining Electric Vehicles in Illinois, or REV Illinois, is designed to create jobs and opportunities in growing the clean energy economy by supporting companies like TCCI that share our vision of creating a better, cleaner future together. Through REV Illinois, Rebuild Illinois Capital Investments, and ongoing engagement from the state, we envision the continued development of areas and centers that support electric vehicle innovation places where businesses, higher education institutions, and communities can collaborate and strengthen the EV supply chain in Illinois. Today's investment in the Innovation and Research Center, in addition to the investments in this company, are going to be really critical in doing that right here in Decatur. 
The research and innovation facility will create a state-of-the-art center designed for electric vehicle production, simulation, and performance testing, which means we get a chance to actually see how these products work and perform in the real-world environment today. Um, this will attract a lot of research and development, but also innovation and collaboration. And we think that this will build on our research and de development prowess in the state of Illinois and truly create an opportunity for us to be a hub for electric vehicles. The training academy that is a part of this will offer new for workforce development programs and provide world-class training in electrification through STEM pathways and registered apprenticeship programs, building the EV workforce through sustainable training and career paths. We know that when companies are looking where to locate, Talent is what's most important, and we want to make sure that when electric vehicle companies are looking to Illinois to either expand or locate a new venture, they should know you won't find a harder working, more qualified workforce than anywhere than right here in Illinois. TCCI understands this, which is why they've committed to maintaining their current workforce and adding a minimum of 50 additional positions. We're so excited to have so many of the TCCI workers with, here, with us here and look forward to the continued growth in this area. In Illinois, we view the clean energy revolution as an enormous opportunity for our state. We know that investing in, clean, in a clean energy future is great for business and it's great for the environment. In Illinois, we view going green as a key economic development strategy and our policies through the Reimagining Electric Vehicles in Illinois Act, as well as the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, are key demonstrations of that commitment. At DCO, we are investing $180 million a year in workforce training related to clean energy, energy jobs, in addition to all the other things that are happening here. All of these things come together to make me very optimistic about our clean energy future. I think Governor Pritzker's bold initiatives and key, 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 clear framework have really laid the groundwork for success as Illinois goes forward, and we look forward to successful partnerships, innovation, and advancement as we go forward. It's such a pleasure to be here today. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my team at DCO. I think there's a number of folks that worked tirelessly over the last year, 14 months uh, on this deal, and really were the ones that helped bring this, for, bring this together. So I thank you all so much and really excited to be here. Now I will turn it over to Senator Turner. Thank you. Good afternoon. So I remember um, being here about a little over a year ago when we first started talking about this project. And now here we are and it's, it's actually happening and it's so exciting. And I, I just wanna say that leadership and representation matters. It matters when you have strong leadership um, such as Governor Pritzker that understands that every part of this state is important and we need to do things that are going to bolster our entire state. So I really enjoy being a partner with you along this journey. So made in America, doesn't that sound great? <laughs> made in America. It's been exciting to be a partner in the development of all the new economic opportunities in Decatur. The work we have done over the past two years has furthered our goal of making Illinois, and most especially Central Illinois, a leader in the manufacture and development of electric vehicles. Decatur is quickly becoming an economic hub for our region, and the announcement today is further building on this mission. I am extremely proud to be a part of these efforts that are repurposing vacant buildings, creating real good paying union jobs, bringing new and innovative businesses and manufacturers and ensuring that we are training our workforce to meet the demands of tomorrow. This is all happening right here in our backyard in Decatur, Illinois. This announcement brings a $20 million plus capital investment, the retention of existing and the creation of hundreds of new jobs over the next 48 months. And this is just the beginning of what's possible when we invest in local business and work together to drive innovation that will change the future of our transportation system. It can be done and together through this public-private partnership, we are paving a new road that will lead to economic growth, good paying jobs, and a positive contribution to long-term sustainability initiatives. This would not be possible without the support of Richland Community College, the University of Illinois, 
nor and Northern Illinois University and the partnerships we have formed with businesses and community leaders indicator. And I am just so, so happy that I've had the opportunity to work with all of them to move uh, Decatur forward. And by moving Decatur forward, moving the entire Central Illinois forward. They have been tremendous partners and thank you very much. So, um, <laughs> but I want you to remember this is just the start. As we continue to work together, there will be more great things coming to Decatur and to this district. So as I invite Representative Sushir to the podium, I want to leave you with this thought. This project could exist anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, but we are doing it here in Decatur, Illinois. This supply chain begins, not ends, right here. Thank you. I just couldn't be more excited than this is probably the most excited I've ever been at a ribbon cutting or a grand opening or what have you for 10 years. And you know, I just said a prayer and I just thank God for giving me the opportunity to be here and for allowing me to be around such magnificent people who all have such a great vision for the future. And you, you know what happened? I looked up and I saw a drone. <laughs> and I think it's still there, is that? And I'm like, you know, that is just like God's silent signal to me that you guys are doing the right thing here. There, this is the future. We, we can't hang on to the past. We have to look forward to the future. And this is, this is what I see. This is what I've always seen. I see a future for our community. I see a future for the workers out here. It's not going unnoticed that you guys are standing on the concrete the whole time we're talking. I see that, and I see a future for you, for your children, for your grandchildren. And the future isn't in the future anymore. The drone's recording it, it's right now. This is our future, and it's starting right now. And I would be remiss if I didn't give a heartfelt thank you to all of our workers, because you have earned it. If you weren't doing what you were doing, this would not happen. And that's a mistake that happens sometimes in our great nation. We forget that it isn't about the people on the podium, it's about the people standing on the concrete. You are what have made our country what it is today. So again, thank you again. So again, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to be here with us to all of our honored dignitaries, um, especially to our governor who has chosen our district to put this fabulous, fabulous future with TCCI and Richland Community College. Thank you for seeing the same vision that I see. Um, it's just such a pleasure to be here and such an honor for the opening of the Climatic Center and the EV Component Hub to all be happening right down the street from my house. It's just pretty amazing. But what really moves me, and I'm, I'm going to be redundant here, but I'm not sure it's sunk in all our heads yet. Kara and I talked so, so, so many times over the last 14 months. And the thing I heard most was, Sue, if it doesn't go here, it goes to China. Because China has what needs to bring it here. And we all know why you can't buy a car right now, right? Because the products are made in China and we can't get them over here. 
And that just resonated with me, and I've never forgotten it. And every single person that I've begged to make this move forward, that's always been part of my ask. If not here, where? Not Indiana, not Missouri, but China. And we have workers right here that can do this job. So I was thinking about how many songs have been written about like there never seems to be enough time to do the things you got to do or time keeps on ticking, ticking into the future. Well, guess what? The time is now. It's time to put people to work. It's time to rebuild our crumbling roads. It's time to improve our schools, to repair our bridges. It's time to raise the quality of life for our community. It's time to make the families that came before us proud of us. It's time to make the future secure for all of our next generation. And it's time to showcase Illinois as the magnificent leader that it is in job growth, in business, in education, in infrastructure, and in safety. And this grant is why all of those things can happen. We have the resources right here, as I've said before, right here in Illinois. We have hard workers. We have intelligent people. We have natural born leaders. We have people with inner strength and courage. Let's put it to use. I've said many times, I see a future for central Illinois as the leader in electric vehicles with the hub for component parts right here in Decatur, Illinois. My little granddaughter turns six this week, and I've told her, you only get one chance at kindergarten, Millie. And I just think about that, and I think this grant will help turn our community totally around so that our children and grandchildren can have as bright a future as I felt I had as a child right here in Decatur. Thank you so much. And now I would like to introduce President Chris Valdez. We have had a long road. They have made some tremendous sacrifices to make this happen. And so it is with great honor and pleasure that I introduce the President of Richland Community College. Thank you, Representative Scheer for the introduction, and thank you to all the folks on the podium for your willingness to partner in this incredible and unique venture that I believe will vault TCCI, Richland Community College, this community, and the state of Illinois to the center of the electric vehicle industry. <laughs> At Richland Community College, we have long said that we change people's lives. And this opportunity is one that has exponential potential, not only for the sector, but for the individuals who live in this community. And I am very proud to be part of this venture that will provide advanced training, that will provide a well-qualified and well-prepared workforce to sustain this project. Richland has lived in many homes in our existence, we were in an old bank, a warehouse, and our current structure just three miles from here. As we celebrate our 50th year of operation, I am extremely excited to see our footprint expand into the TCCI campus in the near future, which may be the first in the nation. From the very first meeting with Senator Turner, Representative Scheer, Deputy Governor Menar, Kara, Courtney and myself, I knew this was going to be a great opportunity. Richland is grateful to participate and appreciative of the $15.3 million grant from DCO to become a full partner 
an integral part of TCCI's vision to bring the EV component manufacturing, climatic research, and an EV engineering and software technology training academy to life. I also have to note, as others have, TCCI's profound commitment to Illinois and Decatur. I am fully aware as a global company that you could have chosen a multitude of locations and you chose to be here. And for that, we are all grateful. I must also thank the Richland Board of Trustees for their vision and their trust in me, many of whom are in attendance today, and I thank you for your support because without your leadership, this would not have happened. Together, we will continue to strengthen the manufacturing and impact this technology-driven ecosystem in central Illinois as we partner together with TCCI and educational partners like the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and Northern Illinois University, we will revolutionize a new model for how education is delivered. As we embark on new jobs in the electric vehicle sector, it will take innovative partnerships like this to develop new programs that support the needs of students at all levels by developing stackable credentials, certificates, and STEM pathway programs and apprenticeships that will provide a workforce in areas ranging from engineering technician to electronic control managers to software engineers and environmentalists. The power of <laughs> the power of this partnership will be leveraged to expand exposure to industry partners ignite worse workforce development in the electrification industry and create a usage model to serve the needs of the electric vehicles, to conduct research to advance science and provide unique opportunities for faculty, students, and staff from all of our organizations. I echo Richard's and the previous speaker's recognition of the incredible collaborative spirit and commitment to this journey. This incredible complex partnership was met with unyielding advocacy from Senator Turner and Representative Schuer. We also remain very grateful for Governor Pritzker, his commitment to Central Illinois, and his vision of creating this unique private-public partnership that not only includes a state-of-art technology, but supports the necessary workforce training to ensure a sustainable workforce in this great area. I am. I am convinced that the governor knew that Decatur, with the stewardship of Courtney Carson, could get this done. <laughs> In closing, I'd like to thank Deputy Governors Andy Menar and Christy George. They provided not only the expertise, but the glue, not just um, not just glue, super glue, to keep the multiple pieces in place, and we're appreciative of the tireless work of DCO Director Silvia Garcia and Acting Deputy Director Allie Grady to allow Richland to be a full participant. So many other elected officials, city officials, and EDC officials, and others contributed to this effort, and we are indebted to them. At this time, I'd like to turn the podium over to Mayor Julie Moore Wolf. Magnificent, magnificent Mayor Julie Wolf. Well, thank you, President Valdez. I've had the privilege of being involved in economic development in Decatur and Macon County for over 25 years, and I can't think of any project that has been as exciting as this announcement today. So thank you, Richard and Kara and your team and, and all of the partners here. You know, in that 25 years, we've had an awful lot of politicians and governors come through Macon County making promises. Governor Pritzker is here today not making promises, but he's here to deliver, and to deliver on something that is going to catapult our community into the future. He's got a vision for Illinois, but more importantly to me and to all of us, he's got a vision for central Illinois, and we are going to make it happen here. It's because of our partnerships, it's because of our workforce, it's because of our community. So, Governor, on behalf of the business community, the workers in this community and the people of Decatur and Macon County, I want to say thank you. Thank you for making this happen.
And with that, I get to turn it back over to the governor for all the really hard questions, because I have the mic. Governor? You could have stayed up here if you wanted to, to take the questions. But uh, any questions from members of the media? The abuse and neglect that took place at Choate uh, is awful. And in fact, it's one of the reasons why we made sure that the state police did their job in investigating, that we were transparent in providing all the information that was uh, needed for them to do the investigation and to uh, hold people accountable who deserve to be held accountable. Obviously, we're very focused on making sure that that facility is doing what it needs to do to care for the people who live there. Um, we're going to continue to upgrade and uh, provide the services that people need and the personnel that are appropriate for that facility. I, I can't speak to how quickly she acted. I will say that speaking up and speaking out when you see something that's wrong is exactly the right thing to do. Uh, making sure that the, there's a responsive people on the other end and that, again, we have transparency and investigation that takes place. That's the right thing to do, and that's what we're going to make sure happens. You know, that's not something that we're looking at right now, but I, I have to tell you, obviously, deeply concerning what people who worked there did. And the question is, can we prevent that in the future? And if not, then obviously that's not a facility that should remain open. But the state has an obligation to the people that it serves at that facility right now. Well, it's been less than 10 months. I mean, I think anybody in business can tell you that it takes, you know, uh, quite a long time to evaluate uh, a facility's location, where you're going to put new manufacturing, uh, and then to make the decision to put the capital into the ground, so to speak, that you need to in the community. So you've got to know it's not just about the financial incentives. I, you know, that's obviously a po portion of what businesses consider. Uh, we're, we've provided, through the REV Act, a very competitive uh, ability to attract companies from a financial perspective. But we have real advantages over so many other states that we compete against. We have a workforce like no other state, really. We have the most talented people in the country. And that's one thing. The second is we have a replenishing supply of that talent because we have great educational institutions in Illinois that are producing that talent. And I could go on and on about the advantages of the state of Illinois. Don't forget shipping, um, you know, managing. We have all seven railroads that run through the state of Illinois, uh, as well as major airports, international and domestic airports, and so on. So we have big advantages over places like Mississippi, even over Texas and Michigan. Uh, and we utilize those advantages when we're attracting businesses. But you'll see more out of the REV Act, more companies coming to Illinois, because we're in discussions with many. I would say those are uh, those are parallel goals. Uh, my goal is to create better jobs and wages, to lift up working families across the state of Illinois, to attract businesses because that helps to do the former, uh, and that's what we're doing with the Rev Act and so many others. We have a data center, uh, you know, credit that we created that's brought 13 billion dollars of investment and thousands of jobs and others. Um, so that's one thing. The million cars that we're aiming for by 2030 is really a climate-focused goal. Um, we hope that people will buy electric vehicles. It certainly helps TCCI if they do. Uh, but we also know that there are four and a half million vehicles on the road in Illinois. They're going to be, you know, still internal combustion engine uh, vehicles driving in Illinois, even if we get to a million vehicles. Uh, but I'm excited about the possibility of 
frankly, having a better climate because we are doing the right things here through the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act to have more people, you know, with uh, cleaner uh, emissions uh, in the state of Illinois. So I, we want people to drive electric vehicles, whoever may make them. I want to suggest an Illinois manufacturer like Rivian. Uh, and any other electric vehicle manufacturer that comes here, OEM manufacturer, as well as companies that use the products, we talked about some of them, that TCCI is providing, this beauty right here. Uh, and so I'm very excited about the future of both of those, you know, which is increasing jobs through the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act and, and uh, uh, the REV Act, and uh, the million cars that I think we'll have on the road that are electric. Yes, sir. Statewide, sorry. Yes. Well, I want to go back to something very important to manufacturers. Remember, I was in business before I was governor and, in fact, in manufacturing. Being able to ship your product uh, from a state and go anywhere in the world from where you are, whether it's by, uh, you know, by barge, uh, by rail, by truck, uh, having warehousing like we do in the state of Illinois, those are all very important things that uh, attract manufacturers to an area. Central Illinois, you know, in part because of the success of Rivian, but also because of the focus that we've had on attracting manufacturing more broadly, Central Illinois is actually growing jobs. I mean, that's a terrific thing. Thousands more jobs than I think people expected in places like Bloomington Normal and, uh, and right here in Decatur. We just announced the other day, LG Chem, uh, moving right near ADM and uh, and this announcement here and there are others. Uh, so very exciting possibilities for Central Illinois, but I want you to know, I think people think that when you have a governor who doesn't live in Central Illinois or live in some area of the state, that that governor isn't going to focus on that area of the state. That's been absolutely untrue for me. I have focused on Central and Southern Illinois, Northwestern Illinois, just as I have on Chicago and Cook County and the surrounding Collar counties. Because we've got to build up jobs, particularly, you know, the, there's population growth in the northeast quadrant of the state, but there's been some population um, exodus from southern and central Illinois over the, you know, 2010 to 2020 period. Um, we want to bring jobs back so that we can bring business, bring businesses back, so we can bring jobs back, so we can bring families back and make sure that we have a place that families want to stay and grow, uh, you know, and be successful. So. That's been my focus. I think Central Illinois has a lot to offer, particularly when you've got community colleges uh, like Richland and like Heartland and, and SWIC and others where we can provide these advanced manufacturing uh, institutes and train workers to do jobs of the future and make more and more money. Thank you.